Ladies and gentlemen, we are very pleased to welcome back Gary Kelly. Gary serves as chairman and CEO of Southwest Airlines, and his remarkable career spans 32 years. Under Gary's leadership, Southwest has grown to become the nation's largest airline in terms of originating domestic passengers carried. He's pioneered Southwest's transformation through several major initiatives, including the acquisition of AirTran, the repeal of the Wright Amendment, the launch of international destinations for the first time in Southwest history. Gary also has personally received numerous awards and recognitions over the years. Most recently, at our 2017 annual awards gala, it, would our, it was our honor to recognize Gary with the 2017 Wings Club Distinguished Achievement Award. Please join me in welcoming Gary Kelly. For today's interview session, we are very pleased to have Scott McCartney with us. Scott is a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. He's been on the airline and aviation beat for more than 18 years. Scott's weekly middle seat column was named the best online column by the, news, by the Online News Association. He was part of the Wall Street Journal's team that won the Pulitzer Prize for its reporting on the September 11 terrorist attacks. And Scott is also an instrument-rated multi-engine private pilot. Welcome, Scott. And the floor is all yours. Thank, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to be here. And uh, great to be here on a, on a snowy New York holiday day. Um, but uh, really appreciate seeing everybody. Um, Gary, I thought we would start um, with an issue that I think is on everybody's mind right now, the economy. Um, I'm curious how you see demand these days, and um, where do you think we are in the economic cycle? Well, I, you, everything that we see, uh, I think, reflects most of the headlines that we all read, that you write, and uh, that <laughs> as, uh, the economy is humming right along. You know, demand is very strong. Uh, we're finishing this year very strong. And, um, you know, just, uh, of course, recognizing that our business is pretty short-cycled and we don't have a lot of visibility very far in, into the future. But uh, no warning signs uh, at all at this point, although, you know, as leaders, uh, we have many leaders uh, here from Southwest today, we're always uh, wary uh, about getting complacent and always trying to look around the corner. But uh, everything looks uh, really good right now. So I think, I think, uh a lot of economists will say that we are overdue for a recession or that a recession is ahead. Um, and, and I think, you know, as we see headlines about GM closing plants and things like that, maybe we're, we're getting closer. Um, there's been a lot of talk in this industry about consolidation and airlines being better prepared to weather the next recession. Um, I'm curious, do you buy that? Do you, do you think the industry is fundamentally different? Um, or will bigger airlines um, just have to shrink more when people um, reduce their flying? I, I think it remains to be seen. Uh, I, I do agree that the industry is healthier uh, than at any time that I remember in my, in my uh, history with the, with the airlines. Um, but you, you still have uh, stronger and weaker. Um, we're glad to have a strong balance sheet, mm -hmm. a lot of liquidity, uh, very sensible um, commitments for growth, and um, you know just a very strong product. So we're stable, as they say, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, I, I don't think that that is the case necessarily for the entire industry. I do think the industry is in a lot better shape than it was in 1991 or in 2001, uh, or in 2008. Uh, but, um, you know, the economy is cyclical, and this industry is very cyclical as well, uh, and I think it will pay handsome dividends to be very well prepared for the next downturn. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious, um, with, with oil prices low, I, I've, I've been around long enough to remember when 
we were about to go to war in the Middle East, and um, Gary Kelly bought up all the oil he possibly could, <laughs> and, and it became a huge factor in the industry for a decade when you had um, a tremendous advantage over um, the competition because um, you had done that. Um, do you see any similar opportunities yet um, in terms of buying oil? Not as aggressively uh, as, as what we did, and that really you're talking about um, a pretty uh, benign program that we had in the 1990s, and it, it served us well for having catastrophic price increase protection in place. But what we found with the program there, it was a little bit too passive. So we were a lot more aggressive in the early 2000s, and of course, um, that's when oil went from $20 a barrel to 150. Yeah. And it served us very, very well. Uh, and we had uh, a huge opportunity to grow when everyone else was uh, floundering. Uh, it was a very, very difficult time. Um, and our whole theory has been uh, we need the protection when prices go up. Uh, if we're a little long when prices go down, that's okay, but we'll still do well overall. Hmm. And I think that that has proven to be the case over the last 10 years. So I think prospectively, we, we recognize we have very strong margins. We've got a very strong balance sheet. Uh, our growth plans are very manageable and we just don't need to be as aggressive with our hedging program, so we've modified our techniques accordingly. Uh, and uh, whether we've got a great buying opportunity now or not, I don't know. And we, we argued that point just this week, yeah. and you sort of end up at equal chances of it going up or down from here. And uh, right now, uh, we've got protection in place. If oil goes to $100 a barrel, we'll have very handsome protection, and I think that's the way that uh, uh, that we want to be thinking about that. Okay. Um, and uh, I always like to put you on the record on bag fees. Um, so Why would you do that to <laughs> this guy? So will a change in the economy, uh, do you think, ever force Southwest to start charging bag fees? You know, it's one of those things that's easy to be on the record uh, for. Uh, it's been a decade since, uh, at least in the United States, uh, the industry has offered uh, a different uh, a, a way of uh, nickel and diming customers. Uh, we hate it, our customers hate it. Uh, I don't think it makes more money for us. And so, no, we won't be charging bag fees. Okay. Right. <laughs> as, as other airlines go up, 25 to $30 for the first bag, um, does that help you? Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and, our, and I uh, attribute this to uh, our marketing folks, which are, who are brilliant, and uh, we're, we're really a category of one, and uh, no one is like Southwest, and it just, by us, uh, we used to laugh about it, by us doing nothing, uh, all of a sudden we're different, uh, because the others uh, have taken a different path, but yeah, I, uh, customers don't, we, we can argue the, the merits or uh, sort of the intellectual um, uh, aspects of unbundling, but the fact of the matter is customers don't like it, they don't like to get surprised, and um, we pride ourselves on being transparent uh, and um, offering them tremendous hospitality and more seats to more places every day than anybody else. It's just a winning combination. We love it. Hmm. So um, since we're close to the start of the new year, um, what, would, what are your plans for 2019? Where, where do you want to take the airline? Well, it's, um, I, I think that we've got a lot of momentum. Uh, we have a very um, tried and true business model going back 50 years almost. Uh, we've got a very sound strategy that's been uh, in place uh, for at least a dozen years. And so we're in an execution phase. So we have five basic goals for next year. One, we want to grow the airline. Uh, we'll end this year around 750 airplanes. We'll add 24. Uh, net uh, next year, uh, and you know, more or less, unless we uh, uh, find an opportunity or two, and uh, that will translate into capacity growth of no more than 5%, uh, nothing new about any of those things, but within that, that growth objective, our, uh, our primary uh, goal is to launch Hawaii service, 
uh, and become relevant there very quickly. So we're very excited about that, very proud of our team. They've made great progress with getting the proper ETOPS, uh, as you're familiar, uh, certification with the FAA. And we're very close, and uh, again, that's very exciting. Second goal uh, would be to continue to run uh, a great operation, and especially with on-time performance. We do desire to continue to improve that. Uh, our Chief Operating Officer, Mike Vandeman, and his team have some good initiatives coming online next year, so I feel very good about that. We want, uh, thirdly, uh, we have a great brand, we offer great customer service, and uh, we're continuing to uh, emphasize with our employees, and especially our frontline folks, hospitality. And uh, they do a great job uh, with that. Uh, and then fourthly, uh, and importantly, is uh, our prosperity here over the last five years has been uh, tremendous. Uh, record earnings, uh, very low record levels of uh, net debt uh, and leverage, and we just want to con uh, continue that, uh, and we are determined to grow our operating margin, uh, our net margin next year, so we're looking at a healthy uh, 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 year, especially in revenues next year. And then fifthly, and lastly, you'll be happy to know, um, we've got more inflation in our cost structure than we like. Uh, it's obvious that the efforts that we've deployed thus far have been helpful, but we're going to need more. So that cost control, uh, the drive for efficiency, the drive for improved productivity, eliminating waste, will become a higher priority for us. It's not that we ignore it, uh, but we've really been in a transformational phase in the last decade, as you know, and uh, now we'll just want to uh, continue to focus on the basics, and in particular, uh, controlling our cost. I, I did, not just because it's snowing outside, but I did want to ask you about Hawaii specifically. Um, is there, is, is the slow up on your end or the FAA end? end? Well, I wouldn't say there's a slow up at all. You know, we were warned from the beginning, since this is obviously brand new for us, that this certification process, uh, developing our own procedures, developing the training, uh, and in our case, creating technology to support tracking uh, for uh, uh, training uh, and maintenance activities would take 12 to 18 months. Uh, we're going to beat that 18-month uh, outside time period. Hmm. And um, so, you know, we, we, our, our, our rough target was to have uh, everything in place by the end of this year. And we're down to two major efforts that, are, that remain with the FAA. And I'm very happy with uh, where we are and, and uh, uh, the, the, the job that our folks have done. Mm -hmm. FAA has been uh, a pleasure to work with on this. Okay. Um, I want to put on the big picture historical hat for, for a minute. Um, Southwest Airlines brought all kinds of innovations to the industry. I'm, I'm curious if you see the, the ability at the size you are to continue to innovate, and what, what would those innovations be? And I'm also curious what kind of innovations you see in the rest of the industry, um, whether, whether there are innovations anymore or whether innovation means um, you know, squeezing more seats into the same fuselage. Well, you know, it's just such a um, colorful history that, that we've had, and we were the classic disruptor, uh, we were the classic innovator, and uh, I think um, all of our Southwest uh, family members are very proud of the fact that we really have uh, democratized the skies. You know, when we started flying in 1971, few people could afford to fly, and now virtually everyone uh, can fly, and we're proud of that. Um, so I don't know that the next 50 years will be quite that transformative. But uh, the, the answer is absolutely. We always have opportunities to innovate. And um, at the same time, I think we just want to be smart enough and wise enough to know what things we need to keep, and not just for tradition's sake. And uh, ultimately, for the leaders of a, a great company like, uh, like Southwest Airlines, and of which there are many great companies, that is part of the trick is what do, you, what do you tinker with and what do you leave alone? So the DNA within the company, we, we cherish and we want to maintain that. We want to maintain our low cost position. We want to maintain the great service and culture and personality of the airline. And uh, yeah, I remember, and you'll remember well, uh, we stopped issuing plastic boarding passes. 
uh, at the gate in exchange for a paper ticket before you could get on the airplane. And people say, oh, there goes Southwest Airlines, you know. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not what we were about then. It's not what we're about now. So um, technology is a huge enabler uh, for innovation, both within our operation and then uh, within our customer experience. And I wouldn't say that we're late to the game, because in a lot of ways, we are at the front of the innovation uh, on technology. But at least for us, relative to our peers, I do think we have more opportunities in the future uh, there. And uh, so, yeah, I think that we'll continue to innovate. And the other thing that, that is exciting to me is the company is doing so well, and we have tools and technologies that are coming that are going to make us even better, and, and that's exciting. I think the industry, uh, and of course we have many industry partners here today, um, you know, there will continue to be uh, innovation in aviation technology. Uh, and you'll have airplanes that will fly uh, farther, faster, and I, I do think that that is uh, a further innovation. And that's exciting uh, to think about. Um, and no doubt there are opportunities for the onboard passenger uh, experience uh, that we can continue to innovate with. In the end, for us, we're just trying to strike that right balance. Uh, because you can have all the fancy stuff in the world, but if people can't afford it, What's the point? So I think just trying to keep the, the, the right balance. Clearly we need innovations with air traffic control, especially in the United States, uh, and we'll need to continue to invest in our airports. Making great progress on the ground, I'd love to see a little bit more progress in the air. Hmm. Okay. Um, earlier this year, Southwest had its first fatal passenger accident. Um, I'd like to ask two different aspects of that. First. Um, do you think the accident changed the airline in any way, changed the culture, changed the spirit? And, and second, um, is there anything you've learned in terms of crisis communication? Um, uh, I, I, would, I was struck at you, you were upfront and visible in videos and in an interview. Um, struck recently with the contrast with Marriott when, when they had the, the uh, data security breach and Arnie Sorensen was essentially nowhere to be found. Um, so. How has it, has it changed the company, if it has, and, um, and what did what'd you learn from it? Well, I, you know, every year um, people grow. And we're, we're all the product of our experiences. And that's one experience that we, of course, never wanted. Um, and yeah, I think um, uh, everyone comes away with scars. Uh, and, th and that is something that we should never forget. We should never forget the family that was involved. Uh, we should never get, forget the uh, employees who performed so magnificently on that flight uh, and all the customers. Uh, so uh, it's now a part of our uh, Southwest uh, history, if you will. But I think the thing, the, the word that I coined for this year was resilience and how resilient our people are, uh, how hard they worked to uh, handle that crisis, uh, and then the aftermath of that, I just think they have performed magnificently. So is the culture, culture changed? I think it's strengthened. Uh, I think that uh, we, we are a better airline. It, you have to, of course, make sure that something like that never happens again, and I feel like that uh, our folks have done that. I think with respect to the, the role that a CEO plays, and, and Marriott and, uh, is, a, is a fantastic company, uh, as, as is Arnie. He's a, a, he's a wonderful uh, CEO. So I don't want for a minute to uh, uh, comment about that, uh, in any, certainly in any negative way. But, um, you know, it does, it, it helps to, um, first of all, the CEO is the chief. And, there, and words matter, as we all like to say. It, the CEO's the chief, and the chief what? Well, I'm in charge of how much risk our company takes, and when it comes to a topic like that, in the end, I'm the chief communicator. I have far better communicators here, and uh, we do have an outstanding uh, leader in, in Linda Rutherford, but you all understand what I mean. And um, one of my colleagues recently has experienced a, a challenge like that for the first time. And it, it uh, doesn't take long, but all of a sudden you figure out, I've got to explain to all 60,000 
uh, at Southwest Airlines, what's going on? Uh, and um, how bad is this? And so uh, you need to be forthcoming, you need to be transparent, you've got to have the facts. And, and um, as I was thinking about your question, that job is not terribly different from yours. And I always marvel at whether it's Linda Rutherford with our communications group or whether it's uh, journalists like yourself, you have to become expert on a topic to be able to report on it. And I think a lot of people who don't try to do that don't realize how hard it is. And so the CEO role has some aspects like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll never be expert like uh, the, the real experts in the field. But you do have to know something about it. Uh, and then I think finally, to be successful at that, you have to have a team. And you have to have people that you can trust. Uh, and I'll never forget this, and you all have heard the term, the fog of war. And that's what it is like. Something has happened, you're not quite sure what happened. You don't know what's fact, what's fiction. Mm -hmm. And in the, uh, that day, in, in, the, in the early hours, uh, I turned to uh, Landon Nitschke, who is a leader of our uh, technical operations group. And I said, I asked him, well, what should we do? And he, without hesitation, we need to inspect every single fan blade in our fleet. And we did. And he was confident along the lines of, and Gary, I think we can actually do this. But uh, how admirable is that? Now, I know him. I trust him. He made the right choice. I would like to think I would have done it anyway, uh, even without that. But my point is, no one person can do it by themselves. It sure helps to have a little bit of time in the saddle. Uh, it sure helps to have a really great team that you know and love and trust. Uh, and then you're very well prepared, you know, for a, a situation like that. Okay. Among the other big changes at Southwest in 2018, no peanuts. I want to know who made that decision. <laughs> but mostly, mostly I'm curious what the customer reaction has been. Yeah. Oh, Mike Vandeman made that decision. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was really dumb. <laughs> You know, I love peanuts. Uh, that's the irony of things like this. I love peanuts. Uh, you know, I have our, our uh, family ranch down in South Texas. For, we sit around the campfire, and we pop out the goobers, and we, we love them, you know. <laughs> but the fact is, uh, you know, for the people that have allergies, and I bet you there's uh, certainly in this room, and by uh, extension of one, there's a lot of people that have nut allergies. They can be really serious. And... Um, I got a, a letter from uh, Ralph Nader, who's a, a longtime friend of, the co of our company and uh, loves Southwest Airlines, and he was really unhappy with us getting rid of the peanuts. <laughs> he said, you know, who made this decision, and well, you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give any thought to this, and on and on and on. I was a little surprised because he's always been the champion of the little person, you know, using his terms. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote him back, and I said, well, you know, here's what, here's what we did. No, we did talk to customers. We talked to a lot of customers. And um, in the end, what we are trying to do more and more every year is take the pain points out of the travel experience. Mm -hmm. Take the pain points out of the effort that our employees have to expend, and then in turn, you know, make, make the travel experience as pain-free as possible for our customers. And there, are, there were over 250 flights a day, every day, on average, that we were having to deal with a peanut allergy in some form or fashion. 250? 250. 250 a day. And Mike and I were laughing that the, we stopped serving peanuts on uh, August the 1st, 2018. On the last day, we had a diversion for a medical emergency for a little boy, as I remember. And so it just, it's a bigger problem than what a lot of people think. And in the end, uh, that's not what what the airline represents. And, and it's kind of like the plastic boarding pass, so I chuckle on this. Well, you know, you all were founded based on peanuts. Well, actually, we started out with almonds. <laughs> <laughs> and then the almonds, we figured out they were too expensive, so we went to peanuts. <laughs> so we'll find something else. And, uh, you know, it's, it, even peanut. again, I love peanuts. The peanut people aren't happy with Gary, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but it was the right thing to do. And... Uh, so we, did, we got some fun uh, letters, but on the, uh, for the most part, I think everybody understands why we did it. Uh, for the peanut fans like myself, they kind of miss the peanuts, but that's okay. okay. We're over it. 
I, I think um, we're going to have the chance to ask some audience questions. Um, but while we get set up for that, um, I, I, I'm sort of endlessly curious at Southwest um, uh, that the company is founded and built so much on a particular culture. Um, and how have you been able to, and, and as you grow to 60,000 employees, how is it you can maintain that culture? And it must get more and more difficult to sort of indoctrinate new employees to the Southwest way. Well, I think the shorter answer is, it, you know, interestingly enough, it, it's not. Uh, now, it is hard to sustain a culture. It's even harder to try to change a culture. Every company has a culture. You just have to hope that it's a good one. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I'm not saying we don't put effort into it. But it doesn't feel to me like, you know, taking the scale of the company into account, that it's any different today than it has been in the past. It has to be a priority. You have to be intentional in your mind uh, about what that means that we're going to do. For a long time, Colleen Barrett did not want us to define culture. But uh, eventually, we, we tried to do more of that because um, I think there were a lot of people, I was concerned there were people that were misinterpreting what we're all about. First of all, it's a championship team. It's hard to have a good culture if you're crummy. <laughs> and so that's, that's sort of part and parcel. Number two is we make money. And it's hard to have a good culture if you're cutting everybody's wages by 20% and laying off half the company. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that have to go into that. So we do want the culture to be one of beating the competition, really hard work, being exceptional at what we do. Uh, and in addition to that, we can treat each other with respect. We can embrace diversity. Uh, we can use the word love. Uh, we, we can know family members, take care of people when they're in need, uh, celebrate uh, wonderful things like birthdays and marriages and, and uh, uh, college graduations, whatever it might be. So it has a family-like feel to it, and that has not changed. What is interesting, when I started, we had 5,000 people. We were having the same conversation. Herb, how are you going to do this when you're double in size to 10? And, of course, today we have 60,000. The people line up at the door to join this company. Um, uh, uh, Bob Jordan and uh, uh, Julie Weber, who leads our people department, tell me it is harder to get into Southwest Airlines as a flight attendant than it is to get into Harvard. <laughs> so we had hundreds of thousands of resumes last year. What is my point? We have, people have an idea in their mind about what it's like to be a part of this family. They want to be a part, and when they get in, they are so excited and they actually help keep the culture alive. And that's very helpful. My wife and I have been married 42 years. And we still love each mother as much today as we did when we were 21 years old. But it was a little more exciting when you're 21. <laughs> <laughs> and it's working in a job is the same. You know, it's great to say, yeah, he's been here 32 years. Well, what is the enthusiasm level? Well, these new folks coming in, their maximum enthusiasm, and it's fantastic. Finally, on this, you know, we talk to our employees, and we ask them what they think, and the engagement scores at Southwest are off the charts, which is probably not too surprising to you all. So it's important. It gives us a competitive advantage. I think it translates exactly to the very high brand rankings we get. And uh, I hope that it is always uh, a very high priority for our company. Well, well, one of the aspects of that, though, was, was you were the underdog. And it was you rallied the troops of, you know, whether it was battle in California or wherever as the underdog. Are you still the underdog? Well, in some ways, yes. Uh, in other ways, no. Uh, it is certainly harder, I will concede, it's, hard, it's certainly harder to convince 60,000 people that, um, uh, that we have competitive threats. And so there is a danger of complacency. Yeah. Uh, I think, again, it, it goes back to, uh, can we wave a wand and make everything perfect and, and make the culture perfect and, and, and make people? No, uh, you, you can't. But we can make it a priority. We can care about it. We can spend time on it. And uh, we can have clear goals. We have, a very, we have a great business model. We have a very clear strategy. We have a wonderful vision where we want to go and we have very clear goals, and that helps. That helps uh, maintain that. We've got a big battle uh, underway in California, and I guarantee you every employee who works on the ground in California knows that. 
<laughs> on their own, they came up with uh, a local effort that they call California Strong. It wasn't a memo from Gary. It was what they decided they were going to do, and they're there to surprise and delight our customers. It's fantastic. It's exactly what you would want in an organization. And so uh, lots of evidence that the culture is as strong as, as ever, if not stronger. Mm -hmm. Are there questions? Would you have any words of advice for people thinking about starting up a new airline? Thank yes. you. <laughs> I would say if it's in the United States competing against Southwest Airlines, unless you just want to lose all your money, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> for this audience, I, I did one, since we've talked about Herb and Colleen, I thought maybe it'd be good to give a little update on how they're doing. Uh, well, I think they're doing great. They, um, they are still very devoted to Southwest Airlines, and uh, neither has an official assignment, but that doesn't stop them from uh, putting a lot of effort into uh, our company. I, I was copied on a, uh, a memo from Colleen uh, Bob <laughs> just this week, and uh, you know she had lung cancer, as you know, and had uh, surgery uh, 15, 16 months ago. And so it's been a tough recovery for her. But despite that physical setback, she still continues to be uh, a huge part, uh, and Herb the same way. So they're much, they're much loved, and uh, we feel the love in return. And I know I speak for everybody here and all, all of our employees that we love them, and we're just trying to make them proud. So, <laughs> But they're doing fine. Good. Good. Thank you well, so thank much, you. Gary. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Appreciate well done. It. So first off, I would like to present a plaque to Gary Kelly. It reads, presented to Gary Kelly in grateful appreciation for your presentation at the Aviation Leader Series of the Wings Club Foundation, New York, December 2018. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I will add this to my collection. <laughs> 